So the gentleman didn't have a microphone. So to, to paraphrase his question, to quote it literally, what's the next big thing? Um, an idea or a technology um, that you guys are really looking at as potentially very impactful? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, for us, it's robotics. Hmm. Um, and it's eliminating machine tenders. Okay, and I don't mean eliminating as in getting rid of them. I mean as in escalating them up, turning them into machinists. So machine tending is typically uh, on its best day in our, in our shop is a semi-skilled responsibility. And in most cases, it's unskilled. Um, so we're actually looking. In fact, I was talking to the guys over at uh, FANUC uh, yesterday. Um, and I forget the gentleman's name that's doing a presentation here today at 3. We're looking to replace the, uh, the non-value added activity of loading and unloading the machine with a task robot that can be uh, moved from machining center to machining center and set up in a couple of hours to, to do the load and unload. And we think that that's going to, labor rates getting up there, right? And, you know, there's, uh, there's a move afoot, at least in Maryland, to uh, make the minimum wage like $15 an hour. Now, our machinists are... Our, I'll say our uh, semi-skilled folks are at $15 an hour, but um, if I'm going to pay for machine tenders, that's a substantially lower cost um, uh, responsibility. I can rent, forget about buy for the time being, I can rent a robot for $7 and a half an hour. So yeah, I'm on that like a big dog. <laughs> for, uh, for Excel machines, the same thing. Um, Industry 4.0, uh, it's a hot topic. You know, uh, that's exactly what we're looking at doing for some of our um, continuous work cells, something that can and will run by itself because we cannot hire anybody, not even at general labor where we're at. Um, so uh, we're continuously working with high, <coughs> with high schools um, and getting students to come into our apprenticeship program but those guys are not going to be the ones that are going to run machines, right? So our operate machines, we have to get a way of operating machines without having the problem of somebody calling in sick, without having the problem of, of uh, just miss loads consistently. That's our number one internal scrap rate is miss loads. And to have something with consistency and be able to read the part and then the part goes into the machine and then you have uh, uh, an I, uh, robot of some sort that can transfer it from machine to the next machine and um, being able to integrate in quality in there as well as um, uh, program or probing and, and CMMs. This is going to be a huge feat. So um, that's, that's our challenge. As far as um, we're concerned at Richards, um, we are looking at uh, robotics, um, but we are very uh, high mix, low volume. But I do believe uh, that there will be a time that it will be, uh, be justified. Robots are obviously becoming smarter and smarter and more and more flexible. Um, and we have the same problem as everybody else uh, hiring people. Um, so that's something we're constantly looking for. I don't think we're ready yet. Um, Machine data collection obviously is key for what, what we're doing. And then we're also dabbling in uh, the 3D uh, additive manufacturing. Uh, when I say dabbling, we got a little tabletop unit, but it's amazing um, how we've used that for some pretty simple inspection fixtures, uh, things like that. So I think our next step will be uh, expand on that in a way of 3D additive manufacturing, uh, probably still in the plastics area. But then you, you've got an opportunity with some of the low-volume stuff that we do, uh, developing uh, patterns through 3D uh, printing that you can then use for castings and eliminate the uh, lead time uh, for patterns and molds, uh, as well as the costs associated with those. So those are the things that I think are uh, continuing to, to drive change.